Well, hey guys, how's it going? Here we are with the DJI Spark. We are playing around with the new firmware update that was released today. I think it is called firmware version 1.00.0500 and remote controller firmware V01.00.0300. And uh, that also includes the uh, firm or the app update for iOS and Android. The iOS update dropped yesterday in the App Store there. I've heard some rumors that some people aren't seeing the Android one yet, but I think, think some people are. We have quite a few new updates. Several, I think, what DJI would kind of refer to as uh, safety updates and some new features. One of the complaints that a lot of people have been having uh, that I've seen in forums and in videos is that the Spark in gesture mode only takes pictures at a, a small resolution. Uh, I think it's the, the HD res resolution 1920 by 1080 instead of the 12 megapixels that it takes with the normal remote control actually. When you take a picture with the remote control or via the phone itself it takes a 12 megapixel picture in the past but in gesture mode it would only take a small picture I think the 1920 by 1080 or there was a lot of complaints about that. It seems like they have fixed that uh, so we'll go through and uh, give that a test uh, sometime later, verify that. They've added a new feature for video recording in gesture mode. I'm not sure how that works yet, so uh, we'll have to play around with that in, in a future update as well. Uh, added an option to adjust the gimbal tilt sensitivity, so check my videos. I always forget which corner it's in. I think it's in your right-hand side, so it'll be over here for a video that I just posted uh, last night uh, in regards to that. So that isn't actually, in my opinion, a firmware update that's actually an app update that they made there I'm really happy with that that was one of my complaints uh, so that adjusts how quickly the camera gimbal goes up and down when you rock this roller on the controller here there's a, now a setting in the DJI Go app that allows you to control that they added a 180 degree panoramic shooting mode and then they added some safety features uh, one while in gesture mode if it doesn't get any feedback for a while then it'll automatically drop down to a height of 1.5 meters in case it was higher than that and I'm guessing that's uh, just so that a person could reach it physically grab the drone if it if they had lost control of it instead of if it was you know 4.5 meters or you know if it was 12 feet up in there 15 feet up in there you can't physically grab it so it would just sit there and and uh, eventually run out of battery so they've made it so it automatically descends to one and a half meters which I think is probably about five feet I would guess for us here in the US so that's that's that's, that's a good little safety feature. They've improved gesture recognition and they've disabled actually when there's no GPS, when, when it's not getting GPS or it's got a weak GPS signal. You know how in your gesture mode you wave and it'll actually back up and go away from you. So they have actually disabled that by default if it has no GPS setting, no GPS signal or a weak GPS signal. And that's really because if you're in a building and you tell it to do accidentally tell it to do that you're going to run into the ceiling and probably crash it or run into a wall behind it because remember we have no sensors back here we have no sensors up here in the spark the uh, some of the others have sensors in the back so that might help prevent it but there is they've added a setting in the DJI Go app for that so you can actually re-enable those if if that's something you want to do i think always in terms of for a software developer which you know, really is what DJI is. They're writing tons of software for this and for the apps. Give the user options. Uh, let them be in control. So that's that's a thumbs up for me in terms of that. They've also fixed an issue where photos failed to save and the shutter sound would not be made while taking photos in gesture mode. I'm sure some of, some of you have ran into that. I, I personally uh, haven't. The aircraft will now exit quick shot automatically when a control stick is pulled opposite to the direction of flight. If you're in one of the quick shot modes and you if and it's doing uh, a movement, you know, going this way and you pull the stick this way, well, it's going to uh, automatically exit that mode so that it's not fighting against you what you, what you're trying to do and what it's trying to do they're going to go ahead and exit out of that which is uh you know that's 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 good i think fix an issue where the aircraft didn't ascend high enough with the drony quick shot and optimized rocket so again some of the special uh, quick shot modes they've uh, they've updated how those work to make those work better so we'll have to play around with those this one right here optimize the fpv gimbal mode in sport mode to keep the gimbal from reaching its end point so that's one of those things that the, this is one of the big ones that uh, 
I've been looking forward to is that when you're in sport mode, it uh, it would lock when you rotate, and um, it would just sport mode would just not work well with the gimbal. Really, in sport mode, prior to the firmware update, it would automatically just kind of lock the, the the gimbal. When you would do movements, you would see the camera would really really move with the with the drone itself. I've taken a little bit of footage in sport mode. I'm interested to go back and uh, uh, take a look at that footage and see how that turns out. Fix an issue where the remote controller would occasionally disconnect from the aircraft. Now that's interesting because I've not had that problem and yet in this first flight that I did that I just finished uh, with this new firmware, I actually had a disconnect and that's the first time. I've had that happen. I mean, I'm using Wi-Fi. I'm not using an OTG cable, but I've never really used, other than just like one one or two small test flights, I've never really used an OTG, well, an OTG cable. So that was uh, that was a little bit disconcerting. So I'm, I'm inter interested to get more flights in and see how that ends up playing out, see if I get more of those disconnects. The next one is that they fixed a rare issue where the remote controller couldn't be turned off. Now, I ran into that one time, and you had to do like a three-fingered salute thing. You had to like, hold one leg up, uh, stick your tongue out, and uh, cross your eyes uh, to get it to, to turn off. No, seriously. <laughs> it was it was like you had to press some some magic combination. I, I Google it, and there was some magic combination you pressed, and it forced it to, to kind of reboot itself. Uh, so it wasn't a huge deal, but uh, it was a little disconcerting because I was trying to get another flight in or whatever. I forget what the situation was, but it just wouldn't turn off. And so I had to Google it and uh, find find what the, the magic combination was. So hopefully uh, that fixes that. Uh, improved aircraft and remote controller responsiveness. I'm not sure what they mean by that, but hopefully... Hopefully that's a good thing, right? And then optimize the battery level calculation. So I guess they think that they're, they've are they come up with a better uh, algorithm to be able to calculate how much battery is left and maybe how much battery you how much battery you have to get back home and those sorts of things. So they don't really give in, give details. Now that is that is the ones that they publish for the uh, Spark itself. Now they're also provided an update for the controller, so the remote controller. So when you're doing the update, you first do the the firmware update for the Spark itself, and then you uh, do an update for the remote controller uh, if you have a controller. So they fixed an issue where the remote controller would occasionally disconnect with the aircraft. Uh, I don't know that you fixed that, DJ. Uh, I just had one, and I never had one before the update. Fixed a rare issue where the remote controller, blah, blah, blah. So basically, they're just repeating some of the updates for the remote controller that were already listed for the uh, Spark itself. When you do the update uh, for the Spark, it says to make sure that your battery level is at least 50%, so make sure you have at least two dots here. And then when you do the uh, update for the controller here, it says to make sure you have at least 30%. So again, I would just make sure you have at least two dots there uh, to make sure that you have plenty of juice. For me, the updates took to the Spark, probably took about five minutes, I would guess. I should have timed it, uh, but it probably took about five minutes. Again, didn't work via the OTG cable, but did work via Wi-Fi. Then the update for the remote controller probably took just a couple minutes, if that. It was pretty quick. It's like I think like seven meg, seven or eight meg download for the for the remote controller. 92 megabytes. So the update for this was 92 megabytes. We're talking between the two about 100 megs worth of data. So I think it's worth it. Just do it at home while you're there before you go out to fly. Man, my spark is getting dirty. Spark's getting dirty. You can see it on the white one. Uh, before I flew today, I had to. I actually had some bug guts on here on the uh, sensor there that I had to clean off, and the uh, the the camera was actually getting pretty dirty. So for me, the process was pretty painless. Didn't take very long. Maybe less than 10 minutes to to do both of them. And uh, hopefully the uh, the updates are are all good. So, so far, pretty positive uh, from, from my perspective. I did have the one disconnect, but it reconnected pretty quickly after that. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Anyways, hope you have a great day. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, give us a uh, like, give us a subscribe, give us a comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see, future videos you'd like to see. Look for a lot more from us uh, very soon. Uh, we'll catch you later.